on the way in, and and um, I've been waiting on the Lord to see whether I got to check in my spirit not to do this, but uh, I, I've got no check, so I'm I'm going to go with what I what I thought of. Um, last evening, uh, Sister Fran and I have gotten into this habit on Saturday evenings of searching YouTube and listening to some of the ministry that's out there and um, last night I, I we sat for an hour 25 or something like that and listened to Bill Johnson um, minister and something came up uh, at the end of the ministry and they began to pray for the sick he began to pray for the sick and um, I got this thought as he was praying for the sick I thought Gee whiz, they've been sitting there for an hour and 15 minutes, all sick, listening to him preach, and they're all sick. Uh, and why don't we turn this thing all around? Why don't, we, why don't we deal with the sick? Why don't we deal with the issues uh, up front, you know, and get, get everybody healed up so they can enjoy the rest of the service? Why? Why, why have these issues and all these things? And I, I'm probably going to, I'm, I'm, because in my study afterwards, I, I, never meant to, uh, um, I never meant to go to even what Bill Johnson had to say last night. But in, in my study of looking at Philippians, something came up. And so I, I'm going to use it. But I want to I say this. Jesus said in John 14, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Now, did he say if? Maybe? Did he say whatever he said? He said, whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. Now, this is what I want everybody in this room to do. Is there anybody in here that's really sick, really got a, a, a physical issue they need dealt with this morning? You do? You do? I know Brother Bud does because he, he's, got, he's got a back issue. Heather does. Chris? Heather does. Carol? Pregnant lady, you got a problem today? Yeah, but it's my mouth. Oh. Okay. It's my mouth. Pardon? Benjamin's foot? Anybody else? Back there? Back there? I had a bad day yesterday at my heart. But, I, but you know something? I'm standing in God. I've made up my mind. I'm not going to Muhammad. Or Islam. I am not going to some whack quack doctors. I'm going to trust the doctor, the maker, the one of it all. Amen. I'm going to trust his word. Amen. Are you all right? And he will fix it. He will fix it. I want you to be able to... Because something was said that about about distractions from from worship, and I don't know about you. You come in here and you're not feeling good, or you got a, a pain in in your back, or or whatever it is. It becomes a distraction from the very purpose of our gathering, from the very purpose of worship. Worship is just not getting information. Worship is not singing songs. Worship is not that. It's us giving what we are to Him. And, and if there's something there that's going to distract it, well, let's deal with it up front. Okay, let's... Let, let, I, I'm, just, I'm just crazy enough to believe that we don't have to pray about it for 20 years. We just got to believe God for it now. Because Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. Okay? Okay, so if you got a problem, if you're one of the ones that raised your hand and you got a problem, I got my hand up, okay, but I'm going to do the praying, okay? 
But if you had your hand up, I want you to say, Lord, and explain to him while we're praying exactly what you want fixed. I want you to declare to him exactly what you want fixed. So, Father, in the powerful name of Jesus, I stand before you today, God, as representative of this whole congregation. As representative, Lord, of that which you're doing in the midst of a people. And, Father, we find in the midst of ourselves there are things that come up against us that stand in the way our bodies our, our minds our, all, all these things and you promised Lord in your word you said whatever we ask in your name you would do it so in the powerful name of Jesus the first thing I ask for Lord I ask for a seeing eye and a hearing ear I ask, Lord, that your voice would be above every other voice in my life. I ask, God, that the spirit realm, that realm that you live in, Father, would be up and foremost in my being, Father. That the spirit of the living God would be the open reality or the open heaven in my understanding, Father. I ask you for that. And secondly, Lord, I ask, O oh God, that you would bring your life upon my life, Lord, that, that, that your life is not crippled, it's not old, it's not aching, it dieth no more, that your life in me, God, would heal all my issues. And Father, I pray for all of these out here. In the mighty name of Jesus, that you'll do exactly the same for them. That, Father, they may walk under the anointing, God, that breaks every yoke in the name of Jesus. In your powerful name. In your powerful name. In your powerful name. In your powerful name. In your powerful name, Jesus. In your glorious name, Jesus. Father, we pray for Jean and Tisa today. We pray for the babies, oh God. Father, I break the curse that's against them, oh God. I break the spirit of affliction that's come to attack them. In the name of Jesus, I declare health, healing, and strength be their portion. God, I break the spirit of divisiveness in Kenya. I break the spirit that wants to upset the program of God. I declare, God, your victory there. That what Jesse and Diane began, Lord, I declare you finish it in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus shakarara masunde sekende de wona dare yama kasunda serera no makorara na basi do do kuiki la haya makoya do ola na bahata indo ki samacha ki ki de Jesus Jesus, in your powerful name, in your mighty name, God, that name that is above every name, Jesus.
chosen, I am free, and I am living for eternity, free now forever. You pick me up and turn me around, you set my feet on the solid ground. I am chosen, I am free, and I am living for eternity. Free now forever, you pick me up and turn me around. You set my feet on the solid ground. Yours now forever. And nothing's gonna hold me back. Nothing's gonna hold me back 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 back. My chains fell off, my heart is free my sin and shame away the slate is clean it's a brand new day free now forever now boldly i approach your throne to claim this crown through christ my own yours now forever and nothing's gonna hold me back nothing's gonna hold me Nothing's gonna hold me back 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 back. My chains fell off, my heart is free Chosen, I am free. I am living for eternity. Free now forever. You pick me up and turn me around. You set my feet on solid ground. Yours now forever. And nothing's gonna hold me back. Nothing's gonna hold me back. Nothing's gonna hold me back 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 and Nothing's gonna hold me back Nothing's gonna hold me back Nothing's gonna hold me back One more time Nothing's gonna hold me back. Nothing's gonna hold me back. Nothing's gonna hold me back. My chains fell off, my heart was free. I'm alive to live for you. I'm alive. 
Put the words of that song back up. Hallelujah, God. I think those are some of the most powerful words we ever sang. We just don't understand what it is. Because we live in an atmosphere of somewhat of a freedom. But we really don't know what it is to be under a condition where you're not free. Most of us, the only uh, hindrance we have to worship, true worship, is what's in our mind. That is the only stopper we got. If we feel like it, we can worship. But if it became a life and death matter, if you lived in a place where it's a life or death matter, whether you worshiped or you didn't worship, you'd have this constant fear, out of fear, if I worship, am I gonna be heard? And my thought at this present time is, we really don't know how much freedom we really have. And we don't really enjoy freedom like it's really been given to us. We, because we haven't experienced the other side. We haven't really experienced what it is. I remember when the Ukrainian folks used to be in our church years ago, and they said when the KGB used to walk down the street with the big listening ears to hear if they were meeting inside their house in the basement, having meetings. And they told how they tunneled between from one basement to the other so the family could gather together to worship, just to worship. And we really don't understand. We, we stand here today talking about freedom and what we've learned, but we really don't appreciate it like we should we can thank the Lord for freedom but we really don't know because we haven't experienced the other side and the one thing I don't want I don't want God to have to put us over to the other side so we'll have to so we can experience what we got but wake up folks that's where your leaders are at that's what all this talk is about the first amendment that's what all this talk is about freedom of speech. That's what all of this is about here. I'm not being governmental. I'm just trying to tell you, you just haven't experienced the other side so you can really experience what true freedom is. Because we don't know. We don't know. We have no idea. And I just thank God every day that we're able. I'm able to sit down I don't think anything about it every day. I sit down with my tablet. I open up my Bible realizing I'm on the World Wide Web. They can follow me all over the world. Who's going to be the next guy in charge? And we think nothing of it. And I think we don't appreciate it like we should. I don't think we worship God out of the fullness of our heart. I think we worship God, but I don't think we worship Him out of the fullness of our heart because we really don't understand what the other side of freedom really is. I want to worship God not because I have to. I want to worship God out of the dimension of the fact even if they told me I couldn't, I would. Even if it was a de life and death matter, that I would, I would worship Him. If it meant whatever, 
to me I would worship him. That I would give him absolute all praise, all glory, all honor. Doesn't matter. We, it's, it's easy to worship in here, Travis. You guys up here playing and we set the atmosphere. It's easy to worship. But worship to me means, God, I yield my heart. God, I yield my all. It's, it's all. Show up in my life, God. If, if, if I can't work up enough energy, Lord, to worship you with my all, show up that changes me, that transforms me, and brings me into that dimension where I can yield everything. I can just give everything. I'm free to live. I'm free to give. Well, come on. God doesn't give it to you to keep it. He gives it to you to give it away. Free to love. Am I getting across to anybody or is it just me? Is it just me? But God says, do you want to experience the other side? I can arrange that. But I don't want him to have to arrange that. I want to be one that can stand in the midst, be a lighthouse, be a, be, be a, be a people. Do you know something? It took 12 people full of the Holy Ghost that turned the world upside down. Christ like fellowship full of the Holy Ghost, you can turn your neighborhood, your, your area where you live upside down. You take out every hindrance. And I know one thing. I had a man walk across in my yard. I, I, I've only seen him from a far distance. Lives up in Webster, New York. I had no clue anything about him. I just seen him. He's my neighbor's, my neighbor's father. And he come over to me and he said, can I ask you a church question? I said, sure. He said, you know, he said, we live up in Webster, New York, and we've been going to the Baptist church all our life. And she said, he said, we find that the church is getting old and it's dwindling down. And he said, not only us, but the, the Presbyterian church in our town and other ones. He said, hey, what, have you got a secret? And I said, yeah, I'll tell you what the secret is. You got to get a hold of God. You got to get spirit filled and get a hold of God. And you got to allow the spirit of God begin to function. Move in the next generation. You got to quit telling your kids that it's good to move all over the country to have a job. You got to tell them, hey, you better find out what the will of God is in your life before you do anything. What the will of God is before you do anything. And I said, you're going to have to change. You're going to have to quit being like old folks. You're going to have to allow God to begin to bring what energizes a new generation into your church. Freedom. Are we free to change? I'm not free to accept sin, but I'm free to change. Because in worship, it changes everything. It changes everything. Changes our outlook, changes our attitude, changes God, it takes the negativity out of us and gives us life. Come on, let's sing it again. We need to sing it again and sing it out of the depths of our heart. I am chosen, I am free. I am living for eternity. Free now forever. You pick me up and turn me around. You set my feet on the solid ground. Yours now forever. I am chosen, I am free, and I am living for eternity. Free now forever. You pick me up and turn me around. You 
set my feet on the solid ground. Yours now forever. And nothing's gonna hold me back. 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 My chains fell off, my heart is free. I'm alive to live for you. I'm alive to live for you. Amazing love, how can it be? You gave it. And shake away The slate is clean It's a brand new day Free now forever Now boldly I Approach your throne Through Christ my own Yours now forever And nothing's gonna hold me back Nothing's gonna hold me back Nothing's gonna hold me back Oh, nothing Nothing's gonna hold me back Nothing's gonna hold me back Nothing's gonna hold me back My chains fell off, my heart is free I'm alive to live for you I'm alive to live You gave everything for me. You gave everything for me. My chains fell off. My heart is free. I'm alive to live for you. I'm alive to live for you. Amazing love, how can it be? Cause you gave everything for me. You gave everything for me, everything. Now I'm free to live, free to give, free to be, free to love you. I'm free to live, free to give, free to be, free to love you. I'm free to live, free to give. Everything for me. My chains fell off. 
Hallelujah, God, we worship you. Hallelujah, my Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord, the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
You know, the word declares to us that his name is I am. That's not a time only situation. He is. He is the wind. He is your breath. He is your wind. He is your rain. Rain is there for refreshing. We need it all the time, but He is. He is your fire. We do need to get stirred up on a constant basis. A fire not tended will go out. And He is your oil. And it reminded me a couple years ago, we went to California. And we went over to Ventura, Sister Fran and I. And we ended up in a place where they get the fresh olive oil. And there's nothing like the fragrance of fresh oil. You know, you take oil, I don't care if you bottle it, keep it a long time, it loses something. But there's nothing like the fresh green oil. And every time we gather, beloved, there ought to be the pressing of fresh oil. The pressing of fresh green oil that imparts life and anointing into every one of us. So when we walk outside of this corporate gathering, that we represent who he is. He's all of that. You ought to be somebody's wind in their sails. You ought to be rain on their dry land. You ought to be able to stir them up when they're in the midst of disappointment. On top of it all, you ought to be able to carry the anointing that breaks the yokes in their lives. Because he is the I am. The I am of the I am of the I am. He is far beyond what we could try to describe him with, with words, but he is. Amen? Amen. Thank you, worship team. You give me 10, 15 minutes. I, I just